Today we're making custom brushes and stars and fog and other very cool things. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. You can find me here on Flurn five days a week because we make videos for you five days a week to help you get better at Photoshop and photography and life. And if you guys haven't done so, be sure to check out yesterday's episode. We interviewed Miss Aniela and we're doing a Facebook, or it's, is it on Facebook? No, it's just on Flurn. <laughs> you guys can submit your images. There's so many, there's Facebook and Twitter and there's so many. You can submit your images on yesterday's episode. Just leave an uh, image in the comment box below the episode. You're best creative portrait and you could win Miss Aniela's new book, which is awesome. Today we're editing an image. Um, we actually took this, it's of Amelia, and we did this in um, by Montrose Beach. We, we're in Chicago, by the way, so if you guys are in Chicago, stop by the studio. We'd love to see you. And um, there's no stars in the sky, so I thought we'd make stars, and I think I'm going to make some fog too. So um, we're going to use some textures and things like that to do it. Let's go ahead and get started. We've got this um, fog image right here. I'm not going to worry about that right now, but I do want to combine these two together. So um, these are two different exposures we used, and uh, I'm just going to hold shift and click and drag from one to the other, and uh, we'll close that one out, full screen this. Um, we use, this is actually kind of cool, a long exposure camera's on a tripod, and we just used my iPhone. It has like a, a flashlight app, and like literally I was just running behind Amelia, looking like a lame-o head, and if anyone was watching me at the time, I'm sure they were laughing their butts off, but um, it kind of created a cool effect. So um, because there was a little bit of movement, there's you know some motion blur and things like that in the shot. I'm gonna see what it looks like um, to comp Amelia, this. Amelia with less motion blur in and I don't know if I'm gonna prefer this actually I might I don't really mind to be honest too much the uh, the motion blur in the original one But this might just turn out to be like way better. I don't know So basically we're just resizing in there I lowered the opacity a little bit so I can see what we're doing kind of you know try to get them lined up as best I could There we go. Let's bring the opacity back up and now I'm gonna put a layer mask on there um, I'm going to hit command I, which is going to make the layer mask black, and then let's just choose a regular brush here. We're going to just paint this white at, yeah, about 20% or so. There we go. And we're going to paint back this Amelia. And the, the idea here is to like blend one image with another image. And let's see, I'll try to get the, the horizon and the surf right and everything like that. Um, we're kind of lucky in this image because it is so blurry that I'll probably just be able to find like an area that's like, oh yeah, it kind of looks like went from one arm to another one. Like, you know, right there, it's just kind of like, yeah, whatever. It kind of looks like it is supposed to. And then <laughs> she has a little bit more of a clear head. So we just kind of changed out one area of that image. Maybe we can just kind of like fade that in there. So a lot of the time, you know, if you don't have a whole lot of like very fine detail in a photograph, you can get away with a lot more um, Photoshop trickery. Uh, also the exposure is a little bit off. You can see this is just a little bit brighter. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab my adjustment layer. We're gonna go to levels and uh, option command G will clip that. So this level's only be visible on that layer. And I'll just make the darks, oh, meant to grab this one. Just makes the darks a little bit darker and it's gonna match the exposure from one to the other. All right, so that's not even really what I wanted to focus on in the episode, but uh, in case you guys want to do something like that, now you know how to replace someone's head. What I really want to do is create stars in this um, because there's we have this really nice sky behind Amelia and um, let's just full screen that out so we can see. There's no stars in it and I think we can make some stars. So that's what I want to do. Um, I'm going to create a new document. So command end and we're going to make this like 500 pixels by 500 pixels. And I'm going to create a cool brush for stars and then I'm just going to give it to you because that's how we work at Flurn. We just give you stuff. There we go. And I'm gonna do, yeah, let's see, something like that, and maybe be something like that. And then, yeah, you can see this is very well, um, <laughs> this is very accurate. It's a very precise making of stars. It's not at all, I'm, I'm just totally joking. Something like this, and um, then we're gonna blur this a bit. I just wanna make it kinda look, look like a, it's a distant star. Now what I am gonna do is I'm gonna shift click the two of those and um, I'm gonna just align them vertically and horizontally. Well, that didn't actually work. I just want this to be in about center of that guy there. All right, and there we go. You know how when you take pictures of stars, sometimes you get kind of that little bit of light on there. All right, I don't think that was black I was painting with. 
The reason I'm using black, by the way, instead of white, is because whenever you're creating a custom brush, it um, it actually works best when you have like a a white background, and then your the actual thing that you want to be the brush that is going to be black. So we can make this white, like you can make this any color, and you guys will see that in a little bit once we actually you know turn it into the star. But for right now, it's best um, to do a black star on a white background. All right, and let's just do a little bit more stuff right there. There we go, that looks great. Now, just in case um, some of this got like, there's a lot of gradient in here and if you, you don't wanna cut any of it off. So a way that I use to check this actually, I grab an adjustment layer and go to levels. Like I can't see, there might be a tiny bit of like uh, d dark gray or something or light gray here at the very edge. And I don't want to cut that off because if you do, you'll have a hard edge and that's really not what you want. You want a brush that has, you know, it's transparent on all the sides. So we can grab a levels adjustment and just take this dark slider and drag it all the way here and then bring it up. And now you can see very clearly, this is the edge of the brush. So like for instance, if I would have had like this, like right there, without this, I, I can't really see that there's something there, but there is a tiny bit there and it would have actually looked like when you waited a brush, it would look like it was kind of cut off there. So this levels adjustment layer, is just allows you to see that because you can't really see it on your own. So it's kind of just a helper. All right, cool. Let's shift click all those and I'm gonna hit command E. We're gonna go to uh, edit and then down to define brush preset. Look at that nice brush. All right, and we're gonna call this star. So let's go back to our other image now. I'm gonna make a new layer and this is the brush, uh, this is our testing ground for the star. So I'm gonna right click, sorry, we gotta go to window and then down to brush and uh, we're gonna right click and go down and choose the star that we just made. Now we are gonna be painting with white and you can see what happens when you just click once and it looks like that. It's like, oh, neato, yeah, that's cool. Well, we're gonna keep on doing more of that stuff. It looks okay, I don't know. Could look a little bit better in my opinion. We'll see what it looks like when it gets small because it needs to get a lot smaller. So we're gonna turn on scattering and as I paint around, you can see it just makes a bunch of these. It scatters them around and uh, we're gonna lower our count. There we go, so now we have a few more. Now it's too big, obviously, so we're gonna make it a little bit smaller. Okay, we want some to be larger and smaller, so I'm gonna click this size jitter and bring that up. And now some of these will be larger, some of these will be smaller, which totally works. So angle jitter is just gonna rotate them around. Round jitter, we wanna stay away from that. All right, minimum diameter, let's just bring that all the way down. Very cool. Now I'm gonna bring my spacing up because we don't want these to be so close to one another. There we go. And let's just go ahead and bring our scattering even farther up. Very cool, let's turn this transfer on and I'm gonna bring my opacity jitter up as well. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make some of these more opaque and some of these less opaque. So it's gonna be like, you know, some are more visible than others and this is our sky in the background. All right, let's just see what this looks like. Um, I'm gonna just delete everything that's there. And you probably won't get this perfect the first go round. I rarely do, but uh, it's worth a shot anyway, right? All right, and I'm gonna just paint in here now I'm gonna do this in a couple different layers. So basically, let's just make these a little bit smaller. Basically, we've got that and it looks okay, but I'm gonna change this to something like soft light. And these are just gonna be like, you know, very distant stars or, you know, something that should be very small. And you should probably actually make <laughs> the more distant stars, I'm gonna make my brush even smaller. So that's like, you know, we don't, it wouldn't make sense to have a closer a star that was bigger, because that would mean it was closer um, and also be less bright. So we're gonna paint these um, there we go. And then we're just gonna lower the opacity of those as well. So I'm kind of layering them in here. Not really trying to get, you know, anything done and perfect on one layer, because that just, that doesn't happen ever. All right, there we go. And I'll just lower the opacity on this one. So if you guys are curious about creating snow or something like that, you could do it in the same way. Um, you just would not um, make a star shape. You'd make something that look more like snow shape. There we go. That looks very cool. I, I, I really like it. I think it's nice, you know, you can see it's kind of like building up and um, some of these are, that's actually, those ones were too big. I liked it when I made it a little bit smaller. It's nice when they're like the effect kind of builds on itself and then you can see, um, you know, like some things, they look farther away and some of them look closer. All right, and then let's make it even bigger and let's 
go to here. I'm going to turn off this transfer because I want them all to be 100% visible now. There we go. And maybe just make a couple of them, like, you know, big ones there. All right, that's too big. Sorry, bud, too big. There we go, that looks good. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna shift click all those and group them together, and we can just grab a regular brush. But before I do, I'm gonna go over here, we're gonna go to new brush preset, and I'm gonna just save this as stars. And I'm gonna give this to you guys, so if you want to make stars in your future, you can do that too. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna grab a regular brush now and just use this as to create a layer mask. So we've grouped all those together. I'm gonna to create a layer mask and then I'm just gonna kind of paint them away so they're a little bit less visible here where my horizon is. And I painted a lot of stars in this. I know that. Um, this is probably more stars than I would actually paint if I were, you know, not doing a tutorial on this. I just wanted you guys to see like, oh, you really can make a lot of stars. Um, so if you're like, that's too many stars, Aaron, there's not many, that many stars. <laughs> then you've never been to Chicago, okay? So whatever, we have a lot of stars here. Um, sorry, I just got so defensive just then. <laughs> I'm just playing. But really, um, you would probably do less stars than that. And they're still a little bit big, but you can see there is a lot of variation in them. Some are larger and some are smaller, which is very cool. All right, so the stars look good. The next thing I wanna do, and this is, we're just doing so much, but I really wanted to do some cool stuff with brushes today. We, we've made this brush Sorry, we made this texture, and uh, this is actually for sale in our in our texture library, which we just released not too long ago, and uh, it's really, really cool. You can, guys can get all kinds of amazing textures and apply them to your photos, and this is a really cool use um, I'm about to show you. So this we're going to make into a texture. It, like we said, it's either white on a black background or black on a white background. White on a black background or black on a white background. So I'm going to invert it. And so this is going to now be a brush. We're gonna to go to edit and then down to define brush preset. Okay, and we're just gonna call this fog. So this is straight out of one of our texture packs, the fog and smoke texture pack. Okay, now we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our brush and I'm gonna click on our size jitter again, minimum jet diameters up. We'll bring the ang angle jitter. So it's gonna change which angle each of these rotates around at. And then we're gonna click on our transfer and I'm gonna click on my flow jitter. Here will be pen pressure. And now when I paint with this guy, let's just see. I'm not actually gonna do white. I'm see if maybe, you know, something like that in the clouds. There we go. When I paint with this, like the harder I press, let's just get that away. The more opaque this fog is gonna be. So if I decide to press like really lightly, it's not gonna be almost visible at all. And it looks pretty cool, you know, especially here in, um, around this thing looks pretty cool because it would be you know if there was fog and stuff like that behind her it would definitely be more visible around a light source like this so even when you are doing stuff like this but you can see isn't that nice like it just it shows up in like a nice realistic like it it doesn't look like soft and photoshoppy it, it looks a lot more like actual fog would look and you can just make your brush larger or smaller if you want fog to be larger or smaller fog there we go. Now, fog doesn't make anything darker. It makes things lighter. So we would just go to, this would be lighten, and then we could still see through there. If you wanted to, I'm gonna make a new layer and we're just gonna choose this light color now. And then we could just choose to, you know, have some more fog like, you know, right around that little bit be visible. There we go. Like it's, you know, this thing's actually lighting up the fog. And again, with this, just like with the stars, guys, I would definitely suggest to you to not um, to not try to get it all right on one layer. Like you can see, I'm just grabbing my eraser tool here. Like these, honestly, I'm just going to lower the opacity because they were they were a little bit too visible. But you can still kind of like stack these effects up. Now we'll grab some of her dress color and make some big fog like that, and then I'll wind up lowering the opacity. You can stack these effects up, and you'll wind up getting a much cooler effect than if you try to do it all with the same. Let's try to just say, change that to soft light. And um, let's see, I'm gonna hit Command U and we'll just bring up the lightness of that. There we go. That's looking pretty cool there. And some of that color. All right, just kind of paint in there. And then we'll change that to soft light as well. So I would definitely suggest using 
your blending modes as well, things like soft light or screen or lighten, um, those are all gonna help. Soft light is nice because it, it changes the color of wherever you guys are painting as well. Now, one thing I'm gonna show you guys next, which is gonna blow your mind, and then we'll be done. Let's just choose some more of her brush, her um, dress color. Um, we're going to actually use this brush to define a layer mask for these layers as well, which is very, very cool. So you can kind of use the brush to paint fog and you can use the same brush to make the fog disappear as well. All right, and we'll just lower the opacity down to about 30% there. Great, now I'm gonna group all those together. So that's all my fog together and put a layer mask on there. And here with the same brush, we'll just paint black and then I can decide you know, where I don't want this to be visible. And I'm not painting it away with, you know, like a regular soft round brush. I'm painting it away with actual fog. So not only is the fog defined, but where there is the absence of fog is also well defined. So here on our edges, let's just zoom in so you guys can see this. Our edges all have a really nice defined pattern to them. And it doesn't look as though it was done in Photoshop. And that's the whole reason behind everything that we're doing here. My computer's going a little bit slow because we're editing in 16 bit here. But you can see here that all of this definitely has a nice pattern to it. And it doesn't look like it was done in Photoshop, which is important because you don't always want everything to look. See, isn't that nice? Like it was done in Photoshop. All right, guys, well, that's it for today. I'm gonna give you guys these brushes because that's what we do on Flurn. We give things away. And uh, I hope you liked watching this. If you guys have any questions or if you've ever used these brushes or any kind of your other cool brushes to make any other cool effects, I'd love to see them. Leave them in a comment box below, guys. And don't forget to enter that contest from Miss Aniela's photo book. It's awesome. <laughs> the book really is great and you're gonna love it, guys. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I'll Flurn you later.